Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this session on the Mathematics in Context Level 3 course. So just to run through what we look at today. So we can look at for specification. We can look at through um, uh, the, how the course is recognized and the performance tables, how we can ensure we can recruit students to it, the content, how it's assessed, how we can plan, assess, how it's, uh, can we, we can plan to teach the course and some results and ideas a little bit of marking guidance and you know how you can then go through to to deliver the course to um your students so let's start by introducing the specification so the purpose of the course is here laid out by the public education so the main idea was to provide a sound basis for mathematical demands that students will face at university or employment but not the same as um, GCC maths or A-level maths so the idea is, is to target students who were achieving a good pass, say, or above a GCSE, and were not going to go and study AS or Adel Mathematics, um, but still wanted to carry on and do maths. And also they may be doing some courses that had mathematical basis. So we can see there an estimated 53% of students do not participate in post-16 mathematics. And obviously this new government initiative of Maths 18, we're going to try and promote that post-16 maths. And in February 2024, there's a new 1619 funding for level three core maths was announced. And yeah, in your uh, resources, there's a link there you can access more information on that. So it's been developed uh, since 2014. It was developed with um, uh, with help from universities and industry, we've looked at courses such as um, psychology, geography, business, economics, to help work out what sort of uh, things to include on the course, as well as this, we're looking at real world examples. So there's going to be actual real world um, data used and to help with the, the delivery of the course, there are lots of resources provided. We've got some on the Emporium, we can look at later as well and lots of other things to help assess it. So like I said before, it's intended for learners to achieve a, a nine to four GCSE maths who do not intend to study the AS side of mathematics. It will also count to level three qualifications. It's a distinct course um, from AS and maths. Uh, we're looking to, to provide at least 180 guided learning hours overall, so it's equivalent to an AS. Um, there'll be so a range of GC content and there's also going to be about 20% drawn from beyond the GCSE. Okay. And we assume that all foundation tier GC knowledge is, is, uh, is known. And it's the linear assessment examined at the end. So, like I said before, there's a focus on real world data and applications of maths. And it's, it's intended to help with students who are studying things like geography, psychology, the sciences, business studies, et cetera, economics. And it also helped to build confidence mathematics and statistics. So how's it recognized? So like I said before, it's included in the level three maths measure. In terms of UCAS, they're equivalent to the AS tariffs. And there are lots of uh, universities that recognize core maths as a, um, a very good profession to have, and they can sometimes give alternative offers or include it in offers. So a list there that uh, include it in offers. So it, it was designed with the help of universities as well, remember, so they, they you know, like the course and they want students to be, to be doing it possible. So how can we help to recruit our students? So we're looking at the ones who want to try to get some extra UCAS points. They might have liked maths, but have chosen to not study at AS or A-level um, from their GCCs. They may be studying sciences, business studies, geography, psychology. You know, they said, okay, I don't want to study maths, but I have some needs which are going to have mathematical parts to it. Or well, they might be seeing some vocational courses that have got some maths in as well. Um, or they might be students to start off studying the other maths and then find it a bit too hard to have a challenge 
but they don't really want to stop doing maths. So maybe this could be an option for them to drop to. There is provided on the Pearson website the information leaflet you can download. It's got more information about the course. There's a link there in your pack. So let's have a look at the content. So I mentioned before, it's 100% externally assessed. There's two papers, and each can cover all the content areas. There is a pre-release source booklet. Okay, we'll talk about more later on. And each contain uh, each of the papers contain extended themed tasks. Okay, and these tasks are based on real world adult um, contexts, and they're they're real data from a range of sources as well. Okay, and there's a range of demand on each of the, each of the questions, and there could be short questions or long response questions as well. And they can use a calculator in both papers, and there is a formula sheet provided. So there's no options to select from for, for the course. It will draw um, from areas such as number, algebra, probability, statistics. Uh, the four contents translated on the basis of their relevance um, are application statistics, probability, linear program, sequences, and growth. Okay, so they're linked to um, important areas for, for like em employment and in, in work as well. So a bit more detail on those here. So application statistics. They need to be understand data in the real world. The probability is that you know a, a risk and and generally you know a life skill to know you know probability of, of, of things happening. That's an important thing. Gaming, everyday life, finance. The new program develops learners really to use algebra and graph model real world contexts, such as you know how many things should be produced, profit loss, things like that. Sequence and growth again links to financial maps, compound interest, things like that. So here's some examples again of the sort of content for each of those. So okay, statistics, we'll be looking at time series, correlation, <coughs> regression, histograms, example questions here. The probability, the theoretical probability, as well as samples using things like tree diagrams and Venn diagrams. Proper probability notation. Linear programming, again, talk about maximum profit on lowest cost problems. Translating situations into algebraic expressions, plotting graphs, solving linear syntax equations, solving inequalities in one variable and two variables. And for sequences and growth, Again, that involve financial and other real life contexts. Things like compound interest, growth and decay. It might also involve linear or quadratic sequences, geometric sequences as well. So how is it assessed? So like I said, there's two papers. For paper one, which is 40%, it's an hour and 40 minutes, it's worth 60 marks. So there's more time given for less marks, you say you just give paper one over two, because there's more reading involved. Okay, it will give allow time to for the students to read, interpret the source booklet. Okay, there is going to be some source um, sources to read in paper two, but less so. So there's gonna be more comprehension. For paper one and paper two. Paper one is the comprehension paper, paper two is the application paper. So 40% for paper one, 6% for paper two. Okay, 60 marks and 80 marks. The pre release source booklet has two sections um, with the two contexts. And one of those contexts will be taken over to paper two as well. And that's the section A. And then the section B has three other separate tasks. I'm just looking at the chat there. They will need a scientific calculator. Um, 
a standard site should, should should be fine. They can still use the um, the class with the the EX or CW model as well. Um, but yeah, again, there's a form in the booklet which we'll talk about later that provides a form of things to use. So they don't need to have the A-level Casio calculator. They can have a, a normal GCC style scientific calculator. In terms of the exam time, which is quite important, the level three maths and context will have its own exam, a separate its own timetable in a separate area. So this little image shows you where you can find it. So to find when the dates are each year, you need to find the separate document for the maths in context area. So for next year, 2025, 15th of May and 23rd of May. In terms of the source booklet, so each year the, the targeted date is that the source book will be available to download no later than the 15th of April. Okay, for 2025, because the exams are a bit earlier, that's going to be available from the 3rd of March. Okay, so again, you can check the, the websites for all those, all those dates. The next year is going to be available for the March but generally it will be no later than 15th of April. So it's important that you download those and give your students plenty of time to look through, study the, the material, and get used to the information in those booklets. In the exam, they'll be given booklets with the information they need, and it will be based on what, what they had in their pre-release source book, and they'll get what they need for each exam. It just it might look a, a little bit different, but it'll be exactly the same information. So here's an example of what it could look like. And again, it's important that they familiarize themselves, familiarize themselves with that data. Also, you can see the AMSP run a core maths pre-release discussion webinar. Okay, they're on independent body, we provide support with exam boards. Um, you know, it's quite a good opportunity to discuss, share ideas. But try to make sure you've got lots of time to spend looking at those, those booklets. And in the booklets, you also get, um, in exams, they get the formulas. So these formulas are provided. Please make sure you spend time going over these in the past, there's been searching sort of struggled with certain certain formulas. So the ones that are going to be new to them, things like the the product of college coefficient formula, the regression coefficient, if they haven't done GC stats, standard deviation, the geometric series formula, these these formula they're important that you you make them aware and that they are well practiced in using these. So let's now look at the papers in a bit more detail. So the comprehension paper, paper one. So this is to develop learners ability to respond to the data and mathematics they encounter in their wider studies and lives, preparing them for a higher education employment. So there's gonna be two real life contexts, okay? They will need to comprehend, interpret and analyze the extracts in order to answer the questions in the exam. And one of those contexts, either in section A or section B will also, um, we appear in paper two. So in section A, there's going to be questions based on that. They're going to be 30 marks. And then there'll be a section B. Again, that'll be in a different context. And again, they're going to be 30 marks. The application paper, paper two. So this is where they apply their problem solving skills to answer the questions. Like I say, in section A, it will re revisit one of the contexts in paper one. So we'll do some more analysis, more um, problem solving with one of those contexts. And then section B, we'll have three more extended tasks on separate themes. And any extra data we'll provide in the exam. 
20 marks for section A, 60 marks for section B. And as mentioned, the link between paper one and paper two, one of those contexts is taking paper one over into paper two. So they won't know which one beforehand. Here's the assessment objectives. Again, I want to be the doing the maps. Area two will be representing, analyzing. Area three is more your problem solving. We also expect students to be using technology, so not just their subject calculator, but also be aware of things like spreadsheets, certain commands on spreadsheets, and also generating graphs. So try to, if at all possible, use um, spreadsheets in your teaching so they can be aware of these different formulae. Uh, so good planning. So we think about how we can plan our course. So it does give an opportunity to be innovative. Okay. So we want our learners to be able to analyze information, apply mathematical skills, to be able to comprehend the information that's given, given, given to them you know, in real life, you know, authentic situations. And also they'll be linked to potentially other subjects they're studying. Okay, so what else they do in mathematic mathematically in their other subjects, if they're doing psychology, physics, geography, you know, the sciences are more obvious, but in things like geography, economics, you know, what, what else they they're using their maths for? Can we link what they're doing in those subjects to what we're going to be teaching them? to help with their core maps. So we're assuming that they achieve the grade four or above. So all the foundation content is assumed. Uh, and on top of that, there is gonna be some extra higher content and beyond that they must, that they must learn. There is a mapping document that you can look at as well to help with this. So they will need to, if they did sit the foundation tier, they will need to make sure they have skills in these areas. So things like box plots, computer frequency, histograms, quartiles, things that are on the higher paper here. Conditional probability, two tables, Venn diagrams, set notation. So even though some of these appear on the foundation, there might be harder things that are on the higher paper. They would have done some simple equations in foundation. We look at the more advanced stuff that's on the higher paper. And again, growth and decay, exponential equations, and drastic sequences, fractional indices. So again, we say that it's recommended to have 180 guided hours. Some sensors may choose to do over two years, some in just one year, okay? So again, a recent survey said that 55% of the customers stated that they teach it as a one-year course, a 2% do over two, uh, do this in year 12. So the mapping document that we have, can help you see where the content is linked with some other subjects. So such as accounting, biology, business, etc. You can find this document on the Emporium. And as well as mapping to other subjects, we're also mapping it to Maths, GCC, and GCE annual courses. And 
in terms of planning to teach it. How many hours should you allocate? It depends on your cohort and your students. Um, again, some students said that they're teaching it between two to five hours a week. Others, you know, if they're doing less hours per week, maybe they're, they're making sure they do more independent study. We have a scheme of work that you can use to help with this. So if you're doing it for a one year course, we've got a scheme of work for that. And we have the same for if you're doing it two years. So you can look at each of those, depending on what you want to do, and use it as a guide. There are also some published resources. You do not have to purchase these live of the course, but they are available. The Pearson project book is mentioned in the scheme of work. It covers lots of different contexts and it can save time in planning. And again, links to how you can use that published book in each term. So if it's over two years or over one year. Again, you do not have to purchase that to be able to live the qualification. Okay, so let's look at some other resources and ideas. So what Pearson has provided is we've created 14 topic-based packs. And each pack contains a video. We have some teaching ideas and examples. There's also the video transcript. There's also some teacher notes, including some links and some other things to support the topic. And a worksheet, including some exam style practice questions. And again, they're produced in other PDF or Word formats, so you can edit them if you want to. The PDF version does include some Word examples at each section. So you can see the different topic areas are covered. The ones with asterisks are ones that are beyond GCSE. So sphere means rank, correlation, and the PMCC and regression beyond GCSE maps. You can download these packs from the Emporium. And there are the videos available on the Pearson YouTube channel as well. And again, the videos, they go over key skills required for each topic. And they go over exam questions and the solutions and different ideas to help teach the topics. Here's where you can find the worksheet packs. You can see we've got Word versions and PDF versions that also include the Word examples. So the comprehension paper, you may be thinking, well, how can we help our students with that? Well, Pearson have produced um, some resources to help with that. So in this particular area in the Emporium, you can download these files. And here's an example. So here you've got an example from the, uh, the Ebola task. So again, these documents, they sort of give the context behind the data and the graphs that you might have. So students can read this information, understand the context behind the information that's presented in potentially a table of data or a graph. So here we've got the context about the Ebola virus. And then we have his graph two, which is the community of deaths using the WHO updates from August 2014. And for each of these, we've then got sets of questions. So 
for example, here, assume that the total number of deaths from the Ebola can be modelled by exponential growth. Number of deaths from day one is 75. The rate increases. The total number of deaths is 1.98% per day. Compare this prediction for August 10th, the model data showing graph two. Again, here's what the mask is going to be rough about. Compare that information with the graph and see if it's a close match or not. We'll talk about the mark a bit more later. You can see we've got method marks, active marks, and we've got the communication marks, which is similar to GCC. Communication marks do not appear on A-level mark schemes, but they do appear on, on GCC mark schemes. So the marking of, of uh, the core maths is similar to that GCC. So again, when you get the pre-release source booklets, uh, here's an example. Uh, from the, the the SAMs, again, you can be looking through these booklets and think about what mathematics mathematics content could you you know do with these graphs or this this information. Okay, so here we've got about the average house price increase in different areas. We've got the data in brackets is from 2013, and then we've got the 2014 values there as well. We've got some other information in the text here. We can look at those source booklets. We can look at the examples and previous ones. Think, what maths could we do with this? Okay, can we analyze this in certain ways? What what processes could we do with this information? Use them in your teaching and get your students to think about what can we do with this. Here we an example question. 2023 was paper one, question four. Again, it says refer to the data source C in the source book for question four. I've got the uh, image from that bit here. It's about what borders mentions Alexis Sanchez. Again, I've underlined it says 45 million pounds of this transfer value. It's got these. Salary per week. So students need to be able to look at this information, find the relevant information, and then look at the questions very, very carefully to see what they need to do with it. So here we've got this little formula here where we've got V is a transfer value in millions. F is the fair market week salary in thousands. And we have to use that information in the source to work out what his fair market value was, what his value was. As you can see we've got to use 45, not 45 million. So here we've got an example response. They wrote 45 million. Okay, they still got method mark for that. However, they didn't quite do the calculation correctly. They didn't get the actual mark. So again, in the um, published resources, there are lots of different topics. And one of the topics is um, social media. And again, you can investigate this yourselves. You can look at the effects of social media on things like mental health. Um, you can also, uh, how, how it affects uh, physical movements, the environment. So there's all sorts of maths that you can find me. So you can be thinking about what maths can we get from that? Okay, how could, how could you research certain aspects of, um, uh, you know, what data can you find about social media online? So here we've got the effects of social media. We've got the uh, number of adults increasing the internet every day. Access to access in the internet every day and greatly increased from 16 million to 33 million between 2006 and 2012. Almost half of adults in Great Britain represent use social networking sites such as Facebook and Twitter in 2012. So there's lots of real life contexts that are going to be relevant to the to your students 
you know, they're going to be heavily involved in social media. And there's lots of data available that they can access and process. Especially when it comes to, you know, that mental health. So making their learning relevant to them is important. So these links are available where you can get information from. And again, the sort of maths you can do, so you can look at distributions, you can take samples, construct diagrams. Look for correlation, but again, no, it does not indicate a causation. As well as the public resources and other things like this, so you can use other news articles as well. So there's a link here that goes to a, an article in The Guardian about the increase in the price of sandwiches and meal deals. OK, so anything relevant, anything, you know, that might have happened that week uh, that you could discuss. There might be some some articles in the news, might be some, some things in different journals or magazines or anything else on, on social media that you might be able to discuss. You think about what maths can we do with that? OK, discuss interesting, up to date, relevant. Day to day things that, that, that you know, they can process and analyze and, and, and get the maths from. As well as articles, lots of books available. You may have read some of yourselves, which, you know, missions to students. You look at certain extracts from some of these books. And again, think about the other ideas you might be able to use. So you know, what appeals to your students? You know, think about current affairs. We have got some topic-based CPD resource packs. Again, they will help you with this. So there's lots of free resources on the Emporium as well as things like specification and the um, assessment materials. We've got past papers, exemplars, teaching learning materials. As well as that, we've got the exam wizard. So for core maths, you can use exam wizard to find previous Maths in context questions, but you could also be looking at GCC questions that are linked, GC statistics, A level questions. So you can search for the topics. It hasn't got to be just for, you know, just searching through the previous core maps. You can be finding things about syntax equations, finding things from GC statistics papers to do with, say, Spearman's rank, um, you know, correlation. So you can find all sorts of content questions and example questions from different areas and different sources to help with your teaching. And each of these questions will have a mark scheme, an exam report, and then you can create your own little mock papers and homeworks and practice tests. As well as this, there are resources you can use. mentioned the AMSP earlier. And lots of other free resources available. Let's now have a, a quick talk about marking and some exemplars. 
So I mentioned earlier that the marking of, of core maths is very, very similar to that of GCSE. Okay, so there are certain differences between marking GCSE and marking A level. So those that have experienced marking A level and not GCSE, this would be useful for them. If you've marked GCSE before, then then you understand that you know marking of course would be very very similar to that. So in terms of if there is a choice, if they've got multiple responses, okay, um, if they clearly indicate which one they want to submit, then that's the one that's going to be marked. If there's several attempts at a question that haven't been and none have been crossed out, the examiners will mark all and award the lowest scoring method. So that's just like either GCSE. Okay. For misreads, again, if it's a misread that doesn't alter the character of the question, uh, then again it can be marked. Um, but it would be no necessarily accuracy marks. But again, that would normally be sent to a team leader to check. Um, if the C mark includes accuracy, this should not be awarded. If there's a transcription error, so if the final answer is incorrectly transcribed, um, then we can award all marks, including accuracy, but this should be a decision of the senior team. So again, that's going to be passed on. Like we saw this earlier in a slide, but the types of marks available, we've got our method marks, accuracy marks, our B marks are our unconditional accuracy marks as well, and we've got our communication marks up our GCSE. Another example question here. So this is paper two, question three from 2023. So this one, company sells two types of medicine, type A, type B to pharmacies. The table shows the number of each type of medicine a pharmacist ordered in each of the two different weeks and the total cost of the orders. Okay, we need to work out the cost of one packet of type A and the cost of one packet of type B. So this question is wanting them to set up some equations, some equations. So one mark for some of the equations, a method mark for an attempt to eliminate a variable, a method mark which is dependent on the previous one for the complete method to find the other variable, and then we've got this communication mark saying that the prices of both of them, okay? So that's the last scheme. Here is an exemplar, an example response, so student one's response. So we can see here, well, this student, they didn't actually write down the equations. They used the table and they didn't actually write down any equations. However, because they, they, they clearly did it in the table, yeah, those equations are implied. So they did get that mark. So as long as it's clear from the table what they've done, as we can see they've got a times two and a times three, and we've got their, their working out, they did get that mark. Okay, so it was acceptable. You can also see that they got an answer 1.34, but then for some reason they wrote down 1.35. So there's a transcription error there. But they still got the four marks because they did get the 1.34 earlier. Here's response two. So they wrote down the equations, they got that mark. But then they did not quite do the elimination correctly, they didn't quite multiply things correctly. So that attempt is incorrect. The next mark is dependent on the previous ones, so they can't get that. And therefore the answer can be correct as well. This person only gets one mark. So there are more exemplars available. Okay, so all the exemplar documents will have uh, student responses. There'll be the examiner's reasons why they got each mark. There'll be general exam the comments about the question as well. So they're worth looking at. Use with your departments so are teaching it. Use with your students as well so they can see where the marks come from, how they can lose marks. So we can download those from the Emporium. So let's have a little bit of feedback from 2023. So analyzing uh, the data from last year's exam is we can see that 
presentation was good. Um, they cope well with the source book clip. So obviously they did get the source book in plenty of time. They looked for it. They understood how it worked. They were able to produce, you know, um, able to work out things like meet group data, spoons rank, things like that. They liked the fact that there was these restart points. So that's something that's been developed more in exams, making sure that if they don't quite get an answer for one part, they've then got a chance to get marks later on and they cope well with the exam then. Okay. They did, however, find things such as standard deviation of group data, geometry series formula. They found that challenging. So it's something to work on. Okay. So making sure they know how to use those formulas. Again, things they might not have seen before. Lots of practice on those. And again, also evaluating just to justify in their reasoning is important. Things that featured things like reverse percentages, okay, drawing graphs and equations and inequalities, making sure they, they can use um, cubic frequency graphs and histograms is important as well. That came up and some test equations. And it was noticed that it was a bit of a mid paper dip. Okay, so they sort of started well, didn't go too well in the middle. But then it ended well. So again, trying to make sure it's all consistent throughout the paper, make sure they're doing well throughout the whole whole thing. Okay, so we're nearly done. So an action plan. If you're going to start teaching, introduce this course. You need to think about are you going to decide on a one or a two-year model? Okay, remind there are schemes of work for both. So you can look at the schemes of work, see what, what fits best with your timetabling. Maybe chat to uh, other departments such as psychology, the sciences. Think about when do they teach certain things that might come up. So if there's particular mathematical skills that are that have got links between their subject and, and core maths, when do they need to make sure that, that they are covering it? You know, can you cover it first? Um, think about what you know each student should should know. So think about the assumed noise list, making sure parents and learners are aware of what they should know as well. Uh, definitely look for all the assignments material and the exemplars that are there, uh, and and you know access as many of the resources as possible. <clears throat> 